new panels produced on the left side for each layer have some additional functionality. If we click on the More Actions button for the thematic layer representing our indicator, we can see that there are a couple new options that appear. Let's have a look at the first new feature, the data table. The data table shows all of the underlying data related to the map layer that has been produced based on the data item which you have selected. In this case, we are working with an indicator and we can see that the data table displays all of the values for this indicator, the legend it belongs to, as well as all of the relevant organization unit information. Not only can we use the data table to review the underlying data, we can also use it to filter data, both on the table itself as well as the map. We can start by adding in a simple filter in the value column. We can see that once the filter criteria is added, both the table and the map are updated to only display values that meet the new criteria. We can add in additional criteria to the filter. In this case, we can use the and symbol in order to define a range that we want to filter on both the map and the table. After we add in the additional criteria to our filter, we can see that the map is altered. We can arrange the values on the table from either lowest to highest or highest to lowest by clicking on the column header. Note that we can use this feature whether or not we have a filter applied. In this second overview, we introduced the data table. This is quite a useful feature for reviewing our underlying data, as well as filtering out data on both the data we are reviewing within the table itself, as well as on the map. In the third part of this overview, we are going to discuss features related to downloading data to our computer. If there are any questions about the data table in the new Maps app, please do not hesitate to let us know.